What's up, subscribers? In this video, we're going to be talking about a penny stock that was requested by one of you guys, Palatin Technologies, trading under the ticker PTN. We'll be taking a look at Palatin's business model, reviewing their stock chart and their financials, and also talking about if I think this is a good investment to get into right now. But first, if you'd like to get updates about our new videos discussing the stock market and personal finances, as well as being entered into our 1,000 subscriber giveaway, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And while you're down there, be sure to check out the links in the description to get your free shares of stock from Robinhood and Webull if you haven't already. So grab a cup of coffee or your favorite beverage of choice and let's jump into it. For those of you who may be hearing about PTN stock for the first time, Palatin Technologies is a biopharmaceutical company involved in developing medications that modulate the activity of the melanocortin and the natriuretic peptide receptor systems. We'll talk about the physiology behind these systems a little bit later on in this video, but overall, Palatin is focused on developing therapeutics to target female sexual dysfunction, obesity and diabetes, cardiopulmonary pathology, as well as different inflammatory disorders. Founded in 1986 and headquartered in Cranberry, New Jersey, Palatin stock is a very small market cap company, currently trading with a market cap of $155 million, and at the time of recording this video, trading for $0.67 cents per share. Palatin is focused on developing targeted, receptor-specific peptide medications to treat a plethora of different medical conditions, with one of their primary products, Valvisi, targeting premenopausal women who have hypoactive sexual desire disorder, a condition that affects 1 in 10 premenopausal women. In in addition to Vilesi, Palatin has a few other medications currently in the pipeline, some that treat ocular diseases such as dry eye and diabetic retinopathy, some that also treat cardiovascular disease, but one of their medications that has caused the most excitement recently is PL8177, a medication that was originally designed to treat inflammatory bowel disease, but now is in phase two clinical trials as a potential pandemic therapeutic. Now this is a very busy slide, and I'm not going to spend a ton of time going through it, but what I would like to draw your attention to are the different subtypes of receptors that are involved in this pathway, starting with the MC1 receptor down to the MC5 receptor. In these neuropeptide signaling pathways, there are multiple different subtypes of receptors that respond to the same peptide hormone signal, with each receptor slightly different than the others. This is where Palatin's medications come into play. By designing a medication that targets a specific subtype of receptor, Palatin is able to ensure that their medication is getting the specific effect that they want without potentially causing side effects from targeting these other nonspecific receptors. In their preclinical research for PL8177, Palatin noticed that the medication was an agonist at the MC1 receptor in animal models to help protect against the bleomycin long fibrosis model. Palatin believes that the benefit results primarily from agonism at the MC1 receptor, hypothesizing that the medication may have some utility in treating the pandemic patients who are seeing cytokine storms and ultimately acute respiratory distress syndrome and lung fibrosis from the overstimulation of the immune response. Currently, Palatin is preparing to initiate a phase 2 study in pandemic patients with a goal of enrolling up to 176 hospitalized patients. With all of that being said, however, Palatin notes that the environment for conducting pandemic research is rapidly evolving and the initiation of the phase two study is potentially dependent on access to third party funding and clinical trial resources, as well as what happens with the vaccines and other therapeutic developments. As we previously mentioned, Palatin is a very small market cap company, and as such, comes with a lot of speculation. But from a financial standpoint, when looking at Palatin's most recent quarterly report, they actually have overall pretty good financial health. And when looking at their most recent balance sheet, they're currently sitting with $101 million in their total assets, of which $86.5 million is cash and cash equivalents, and they only have $24.1 million in total liabilities. Revenue-wise, however, Palatin is not doing as well, posting a net loss of $3.9 million over this past quarter. With all of that said, analysts feel that Palatin has a ton of potential ahead of it. In this article by Andrew Francis, he notes that multiple analysts have rated Palatin as a buy, and cites that there has been a ton of insider purchases recently, most notably by the director who recently bought an additional 54,000 shares of the company's common stock. And investment in Palatin does not come without risks though, and they definitely have competition. 
most notably from AstraZeneca as well as Login Pharmaceuticals. And Palatin Management brings up even more potential risks in their most recent 10K, filed with the SEC September of 2020. Citing their history of multiple previous net losses, the likely need for additional funding in order to help fund their clinical trials, their limited operating history, and the risks of existing shareholder dilution in the setting of needing to raise additional capital, just to name a few. If you want to learn more, be sure to check out the 10K available on Palatine's Investor Relation page. Taking a look at PTN's five-year chart, you can see that they are still significantly down from their highs at around $1.40, but we have started to see some nice recovery since the pandemic. So will I be buying shares of PTN? No, not yet. I still feel like I need to learn more about their business before I consider investing some of my capital. And investment into PTN stock definitely comes with a lot of risks. And in the short term, I feel that any potential movement that we see in the share price is going to be largely correlated with any type of positive news that we see coming out about their progress in their clinical trials for the potential pandemic medication. But with that said, I certainly think that PTN stock has a ton of potential ahead of them. They have a ton of other medications in the pipeline, which I need to research further. But any time that I'm researching a company that is not yet profitable, and there is talk about potential shareholder dilution, I become a little bit hesitant about making an investment. What are your thoughts in Palatine stock? Is this a company that you're invested in? Would you consider investing in this company? Where do you see the share price going over both the short term and the long term? Please be sure to comment down below and let me know what you think. And while you're down there, if there are any other stocks or topics that you want to see me talk about in future videos, please feel free to comment that down below as well. As a reminder, this video is for entertainment purposes only. I am not a certified financial planner. I'm a resident physician with an interest in personal finances and investing. Please make sure you're doing your own research before you make any financial decisions. If you haven't already, be sure to check out this video about how to participate in our 1,000 subscriber giveaway. And please be sure to smash that like button and click on the subscribe button for the YouTube algorithm and to help support my channel. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.